Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top five reasons why your electric range has little to no heat when broiling. Stick around to the end of the video for some important safety tips that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. The first thing to check is the power supply. Electric ranges need a full 240 volts to heat properly. If you only have 120 volts coming in, the lights may come on, but the range won't heat. So you'll need to go check the circuit breakers. Whether they're tripped or not, we're going to reset them. Then we can check the wall socket with a multimeter set to volts AC. Test each side to make sure it reads 120 volts. And 240 volts combined. Keep in mind that the number can fluctuate up or down by 10%. If the socket doesn't have proper voltage, then either it or one of the circuit breakers may need to be replaced. Next, we can check the broil element. It heats up the oven when you broil. The broil element is usually mounted on the top of the oven. It's a cow rod element with two wire terminals and usually has a few more turns than the bake element. The broil element is located on the top of the oven cavity. If you're getting little to no heat when broiling, it could be that the broil element has gone bad. Sometimes when the element fails, it'll make holes or burn marks so inspect it for any damage. If it looks okay, we'll have to test it for continuity. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. In most cases, you can remove the mounting screws that hold the element in and pull it forward. Once you have access to the wires, you can remove them but be careful they don't slip back through the rear hole, otherwise you'll have to retrieve them. Touch a test probe to each terminal of the element. If it doesn't have continuity, then it's bad and will have to be replaced. If you see any swelling or damage, you should replace the element, even if it has continuity. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we can check the oven temperature sensor. It tells the control board the temperature inside the oven. Oven temperature sensors are a type of resistor in which the ohms reading will change as the temperature does. They're usually a small metal rod with a mounting plate and two wires. Oven temperature sensors are usually mounted in the upper left or right corner of the oven, but in order to test it, you'll have to go around to the back of the range. If the range has little to no heat when broiling, it could be because the temperature sensor is bad. The most common sensors should read around 1080 ohms at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If you aren't sure, you can always look at the tech sheet for your range. The sensor can fail in two ways. If the ohms reading is off, it could cause the oven temperature to be different than what you selected. Or if it's totally failed and you don't get a reading at all, then the range won't start. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in, but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Once you have access to the sensor, remove the wires and touch a test probe to each terminal. If the ohms reading is way off, or you don't get a reading at all, it'll have to be replaced. Next we can check the thermal fuse. It's a safety device that shuts off the power to the elements if the range overheats. The thermal fuse is usually a small round fuse that shuts the power off if the range goes over the rated temperature of the fuse. They usually have two wire terminals to attach the wires. They're usually located on the back of the range behind an access panel. If the range has little to no heat when broiling, it could be because the thermal fuse is bad to see if it's gone bad, we'll have to test it for continuity. So set your meter to continuity again. Once you have access to it, you can take the wires off and touch a test probe to each terminal. If it doesn't have continuity, then it'll have to be replaced. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. The last thing to check is the oven control board. It controls the functions of the range. The oven control board is usually a computer board. 
It collects all the data from the sensors and switches and controls the functions of the range. It's usually mounted in the middle of the control panel on the range. If a relay has failed on the board, it may not send power to the broil element, causing little to no heat when broiling. There are a lot of different control boards out there, so we can't show you how to test them all. You're going to have to grab your tech sheet and follow the diagnostics or error codes to see if it's gone bad. In this example, you would have to enter the diagnostic mode and press broil to test that the relay is sending power to the broil element. If it fails the test, it'll have to be replaced. Now here are those safety tips we mentioned earlier. A lot of people are still using aluminum foil to protect their ranges from spills and grease buildup. Although it may seem like a good idea, you may not be aware of the dangers it can pose. Firefighters respond to over 170,000 kitchen fires per year, and failing to keep the range clean is linked to more than 13,000 of those. On electric cooktops, many people cover the drip pans with foil so they don't have to clean them, but this can cause moisture retention, making them rust even faster. It can also block airflow, reflect heat back into the elements damaging them, or if the foil touches the element, it could be a shock hazard or start a fire. On gas cooktops, wrapping the grates, burner heads, or drip pans in foil can cause heat retention, carbon monoxide poisoning, as well as starting a fire. In general, you'll want to avoid lining the oven with foil because it could block air passages, causing heat buildup that causes poor cooking and increases the dangers of a fire. If the foil gets too hot, it could melt, damaging the oven lining or starting a fire. With electric ovens, putting foil under the element could cause heat to be reflected back into the oven, overcooking the food and possibly damaging the element. If the foil touches the element, it could become a shock hazard. In gas ovens, blocking air passages could affect the burner operation, causing poor cooking and carbon monoxide poisoning. You also don't want to completely cover an oven rack, as this will disrupt the airflow and cause cooking problems. You should only use a small pan on a rack several inches below the food you're cooking to catch drips. Due to these dangers, you don't want to use aluminum foil to try to keep the range clean. You should clean the oven and underneath the cooktop regularly to prevent grease buildup. So keep the foil off the range, keep it clean, and keep an eye on it while you're cooking. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.